Good morning and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I am Anuj. With me, of course, uh, Sonia and Surbhi. And uh, this is going to be an important week, uh, last week of earnings season, which hasn't been kind to the market, uh, uh, especially the, the last few days, the likes of M&M and a couple of others leading to a bit of a derating in a lot of stocks. So it will be important to see if at least we can finish on a better note, though if you look at the list, you'll have to be a bit uh, nervous uh, on that list. Uh, and of course, the market showing quite a bit of weakness, especially in the broader market. Good morning, both of you. Hi, good morning, Anuj. Good morning, morning Anuj. Uh, this will be, uh, you know, it also, if you look at the mid-caps, you feel a bit more nervous, right, Anuj? I mean, if what's happened in 2017 so far, the Nifty is 19. up about 2019. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm two years in the past. It's Monday, it's all right. I think we're grounded this much. Okay, the weekend hangover. You get perhaps. older, Sonia. <laughs> Right, age is catching up, right? Uh, 2019 so far. It, it's still only February, right? So it takes some time to kind of yeah. get used to the year. But Nifty is up 0.7%. The mid-cap index is down 7%. So mm -hmm. is it just suspect stocks that you should worry about, Anuj? I mean, the ADAG group stocks, the Adani group stocks, the DHFLs of the world. Or should you now start to also be concerned about some of the quality names? You know, interesting you said 2017 because, you know, I'm going further back now, 2008-9. I think this market gives you that kind of feeling. The index is at 11,000. Trust me, the feeling is of 9,000. Uh, and, uh, you know, the f a reversal on Friday for the index was brutal. It, it was sharp. And, <clears throat> you know, if 10,980 really was going to be a big support, it didn't take any support there at all. The market just slides through that level and closed lower. Uh, uh, Important levels to watch then 20 day moving average of uh, 10,864 and you know 200 day moving average of 10,855. Now, this is a market which is still trending up on the index, make no mistake about that. Uh, even if it's because of seven or eight stocks, at least on the index, it's still trending up. Though on Friday, of course, it had a big reversal. The bank nifty is very, you know, tentatively poised at around the 20 day moving average of 27,237 because below that, there's a good chance of a move towards 26,550, which is the 200 day moving average. Uh, I think for me, the other important aspect of trade on Friday was uh, the m and numbers. Uh, not just m and numbers, but auto earnings in general because they have punctured what looked like a promising rally. You know, it, uh, In fact, on Friday, my thought process was that perhaps at least autos have bounced back and Friday's biggest loser was the auto index. Uh, that, of course, had a lot of Tata Motors, uh, uh, you know, attached to it. But even then, uh, that I think is, uh, is quite declining, uh, quite uh, disconcerting. I think of course, ADAG stocks, they are the ones which are down quite a bit. So that's the, the pledge which is taking its toll. But even otherwise, you know, as you pointed out, even good quality stocks, you know, there are so many stocks like Ashok Lele and Mothers and Sumi, Escorts itself, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. I have so many stocks which are now resembling levels closer to 9,000 on the Nifty. Having said all of that, I think this is still a market which is giving you, you know, both long and short opportunities. Uh, and this is a market, as I said, it's still at, if the index is at 11,000, Obviously, some stocks have done remarkably well. So I think the key in this market is to avoid, completely avoid, and completely and totally avoid companies where you have debt, where there's pledge, and uh, you know, debt a lot of companies take. But you have a combination of debt, very high promoter pledge, and perhaps interest cost, which is way higher than the, the earnings of the company a bit. I think you just simply avoid those companies or try to short those companies. That's making a good trade. And otherwise, stick with the more expensive stocks because that's what's keeping you safe in this market. Yeah, one would have thought mm -hmm. that the consumption piece is picking up, but now more and more companies are scaling down their guidance mm. for the full year. So that, I guess, is uh, something to uh, ponder about. But, uh, Surbhi, how is 2017 shaping up for you so far? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get to 2019. I think uh, it's good to be in the present. Uh, Anuj, I completely take your point. That could perhaps really explain I mean, why every now and then we go back to the same six, seven names, right? We talk yeah. about HDFC twins, we talk about IT, uh, TCS, Infosys. I mean, they continue to be... The, to be the only piece that keeps working in this market. Um, I was looking at some of the morning cues as well uh, from Asia. Today we'll have China coming back, for instance. Well, a lot of the global commentary has come back around trade fears, trade talk. Uh, we'll get some important cues for the metal space as well because China is reopening after that long holiday. So how's the price trend on the base metal side, Ferris? All of that will be important. I thought uh, Christine Lagarde's quote from the weekend was quite interesting. I mean, anyway, they've downscaled the... Uh, the guidance for the year, as in the, the GDP uh, expectations for uh, the world economy. Now she's talking about a global storm and talking about, of the, about the risks. None of this is unknown to the market. It's just that it's being all put together. Yeah. But uh, Anuj, I mean, uh, for the market, does this mean that all things put together, we're in that range and the breakout has failed? I mean, is that how we should basically read this? 
Uh, I, I think perhaps too early to say breakout has failed uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, uh, one day should not, uh, you know, tell you that, okay, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, you're now going down. Uh, for all you know, if to, today we have a big rally, once again, uh, you know, we'll be talking about the breakout. I think the point you made on the global market is very important because over the weekend, I was uh, in conversation with some fund managers. Uh, mm -hmm. And while it's now well documented that at least this this year we have underperformed global markets a lot uh, some part of that is catch up because last quarter we had a really good 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 market for us uh, the the big worry which is now emerging is the second half slowdown in the you know in the global market and a potential uh, you know it's too early to say that but a potential uh, recession kind of scenario uh, i think in the us i think that that's something uh, and which is in sync with what the market did in 2008-9 as well when you know broader market started to give you that indication much earlier before the the uh, you know the indian market corrected i'll just say one point here though uh, uh, 2017 spoiled a lot of people because in 2017 we had such a big rally and you know perhaps we are still going through that uh, that you know that that mean reversion 2018 was a year of mean reversion perhaps that is still continuing and this may coincide with the market bottoming out somewhere around may june the broader market somewhere around may june with the general election as well and regardless of the general election outcome though the market would prefer of course uh, mr modi to come back and regardless of the general election outcome uh, of course there's going to be big disappointment if mr modi does not come back and big correction as well somewhere around may june uh, you know you might you know have the market factor in the absolute worst also keep in mind you know a lot of stocks are falling on very low volumes mm -hmm. uh, that's because the there's absolutely no bias interest in a lot of mid caps and small caps uh, once that is out all it will require is just just three or four funds saying that okay enough is enough you need to you know get some good quality stocks in our portfolios and same stocks will bounce back 30 40 percent on low volumes again mm -hmm. uh, that perhaps so the key would be to perhaps keep your capital safe till that the thing you know till, till this mess is out but second half of this year my sense is you'll have a big broader market rally okay well i guess the global growth slowdown uh, theory ties in with some of the global oriented stocks as well like yes. tata motors for example it saw almost 400 crores of delivery based selling on friday and talking about that in fact domestic institutions sold almost 1000 crores in the cash market on friday so don't lose sight of that so um, not looking really good in fact the sgx nifty also indicating that we could uh, see further a sell off after the kind of moves that we saw on friday but let's uh, kick start the show on that note and tell you what our wise experts have to say Rhythm Desai of Morgan Stanley says that the wide performance gap between the Nifty and the Sensex and the broad market is nothing unique. They believe this gap will close with the broad market rising rather than the Nifty falling. Okay, let's get you some money market views as well then. Pramit Brahmbhat of Veracity says lower crude oil prices will help the rupee to appreciate. He sees the trading range for the spot USD INR to be 71 to 71 half. And on the bonds, Ajay Magnolia of Edelweiss says the markets could not extend the post-policy euphoria as participants seem to be weighed down by paper supply concerns. Uh, the concerns are likely to persist, but the market bias is expected to be positive on the back of the dovishness expressed at the policy review. He expects a new 10-year benchmark to trade in a range of 7.28 to 7.38% today.